Now uh, we come to something that I consider uh, quite a highlight of the day. Other people might disagree. I think it is a highlight uh, because after all the talk by all the developers who use this stuff and to develop it, we also have a talk by somebody who uses Osmocom software um, for a very long time, I think since 2010 or so. Um, Nine even, yeah. I mean, we started with OpenVC in 2008, so you can get, see how early that was. And um, uh, not only use it, but also uh, do a lot by funding uh, a lot of the development that uh, initially Holger did and uh, some other people now are doing. Um, so I'd like to welcome Rock Alexander Nomine uh, of OnWaves uh, to give his talk about uh, how they use Osmocom in a commercial network. Uh, thank you very much, Harald. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of background about uh, what OnWaves is. Um, OnWaves is a maritime GSM operator, which means that we operate on everything which is more or less floating. Um, uh, uh, let me see if I can increase. Uh, so I don't have so much choice in terms of increasing the scale. Is it slightly better or not at all? I don't think we can do much about it now. I, I'm sorry, but um, the slides will be published. Ah, there is a zoom. Oh, there is a zoom, a digital zoom. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Ah. <laughs> first te technical achievement. <laughs> um, yeah, so on waves is a maritime op maritime GSM operator, which means that we put uh, GSM networks on board ships. Um, we started back in 2007. The company is actually uh, based in Reykjavik with office in Reykjavik in, in Paris. Uh, we are the subsidiary of Iceland Telecom, uh, which is the incumbent operator in Iceland. So it's a large, small operator there. Uh, we operate mostly on everything which is floating, meaning we today we put base stations on board vessels that are 20 crew members. Uh, it goes from, I think we have today from 20 crew members to 5,000 users uh, on, board, uh, on board one ship, so multiple market segments. Um, we operate our own end-to-end -to -end, uh, core network, which means that we, don't, we almost don't rely on our parent company um, to, provide, uh, to provide any technical services to us. Um, yeah, the rest is... Uh, so, market segments, uh, we started with cruise vessels and ferries, uh, well, for one obvious reason, uh, those were the larger, the larger kind of ships we could, uh, we could uh, operate on. Uh, we moved to offshore, commercial, fishing, meaning really everything which is floating, and every vessel which, of course, spends a little bit of time at sea. Uh, if the vessel spends uh, 11 months in port, it's really not of interest for us. We, we were actually mostly an inbound roaming uh, operator, meaning we started without having any, any uh, zero customers. And we have started to develop a uh, prepaid offer uh, a few years ago. So today we provide SIM cards to the crew members and they can use those SIM cards on board the ship. Offshore, we use, uh, we use, uh, uh, we use roaming sponsors to do that. Uh, and of course, we still have uh, we still have our in main uh, main inbound roaming uh, revenue stream. Uh, some of the vessels we operate, so it's you see it's it's really all kind of ships. Meaning it's you have very ugly ones on the top left, uh, nice uh, very nice ones on the bottom right, and and you you even have the that's the the one in the middle is actually the one uh, owned by the uh, Microsoft. One of the two Microsoft founders. Yeah, so they use open source technology. It's cool. <laughs> um, it's uh, meaning it's it's a very 
just to give you about a, an idea about how the network is. Um, so we use a combined BTS and BSC on board. Um, that came that came a little bit historic, meaning the uh, the first system we were using was actually a combined B BTS and BSC, and we realized after that it was a very good setup uh, for uh, for for a maritime environment because it's very seldom that you have handovers between ships. Um, so all the all the ships are connected using uh, stabilized uh, stabilized VSAT antenna. Um, uh, everything then comes back to our core network, which is located in Iceland, and then we go over the PSTN. Um, again, it's a normal, in a sense, it's a normal core network, meaning we have uh, we have an MCC MNC, we have global titles, we have normal uh, roaming elements there. So it's not a private; uh, it's really a public network. So I was I was talking about. Um, the combined BTS and BSC, um, well, you can see it here. It's actually very, very close to a Sysmo BTS. Um, the main, meaning we, we have some small hardware difference, but uh, apart from that, the base, the base is exactly the same. Um, it's uh, it's uh, PoE driven, so most of the time we deploy using a PoE injector or a PoE switch. And we we put uh, we put a few base stations on board, or we connect the base station to a DAS. Uh, it has its own integrated GPS receiver. Uh, we don't use it actually. To there is there is a t, there is an OCXO inside, so we don't use the GPS for that. We use the GPS in order to know the location of the vessel and when we can operate and when we have to deactivate the radio. Um, so we operate. Uh, using uh, half rate channels, so that makes up to 12 simultaneous calls, uh, which is more than enough for uh, for most of the most of the applications. Um, we we have done. In, I'm going to go over it over uh, on the next slides, but we we have done a lot of work in order to limit the 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 amount of idle uh, traffic that we use. Uh, today it's far less than five megabytes a, a month. And also to limit the amount of bandwidth that we use for a call. Uh, today we are around 8 kilobits per second IP bandwidth. So <clears throat> some 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 example of coverage. Uh, just the access unit by itself uh, can cover something like a 40 40 meters radius on the ship. You have to think that the ship is a pile of metallic box. So the coverage, the propagation there, uh, I would say does not. Uh, it's going to be very, very hard to to plan any kind of coverage on the ship if you don't use, uh, I would say, wet finger approach. <laughs> Medium size solution. The so the the, Sysmo, the maximum output power of the Sysmo BTS is 23 dBm. And with those 23 dBm, you can uh, you can drive up to something like four or five antennas, um, so providing coverage on on each of the deck uh, of the ship. Again, that's for a small, pretty small ship. So that's passi what, that's uh, passive uh, what we call a passive DAS coverage. Um, and the, the setup there is extremely easy. We use asymmetric splitters. Uh, so those are I mean, depending on the depending on the splitter we use uh, uh, seven to one, uh, four to one, five to one, uh, in order to have more or less the same output power at for each antenna. Um, I was talking about the. Of course, we operate into a licensed uh, frequency spectrum, so we don't have the right to. Let the, 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 to transmit in port. So in order to in order to fulfill that uh, that need, uh, the system is automatically going to disable disable the GSM uh, the TRX uh, when the vessel is going to come close to the shore. Depending on the so we get the location of the ship every five minutes, and depending on the depending on the location of the ship, depending on the country. Uh, we are going to switch off at 12 nautical miles or 2 nautical miles, or we are going to leave the system on if we know that, let's say, it's an unmanned uh, island. 
again, if the GPS is being asked, there is some kind of, uh, I would say, legal, uh, meaning we, we can end up in some serious legal issues if, this, if the system continues to transmit. Um, if, the, if the BSC is disconnected for more than 400 seconds, the radio is going to turn, it off, uh, turn itself on, uh, even if there is no communication to shore. We operate on board ships. Uh, we operate with satellite-based links. Um, and I think this represents most of our challenge, actually. Um, there is absolutely, most of the uh, system that we use, um, there is absolutely no support for any kind of QoS. Uh, most of those systems make an extremely heavy use of uh, port uh, address uh, translation. Uh, so there is absolutely no way to mean, and you, we don't want to do, to get that anyway. But meaning you you cannot get a public IP address end to end. Uh, most of those system, most of those vessels, they have some crazy firewall firewall rules. Um, that means so we need to we need to limit the number of ports, and we need to li to limit as much as we can uh, uh, the requirements that we have on their uh, on 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 their uh, on their IT. Uh, the typical bandwidth for a ship, for the ship, it, for the entire vessel itself, is usually something like 128 kilobits per second, 256, and that's for all applications on the ship, in internet access for the crew, uh, office, voice calls, everything. And the round trip time is most of the time way over 800 milliseconds. So of course, the round trip time for the satellite itself, it's about 700 milliseconds, but then you have to take, take into account the time from the from the ship to the to the over to the satellite to the to the air station to uh, to our switch uh, in Iceland. And most of the time, the jitter is way over 200 milliseconds. I think it's really really rare that we go below 100 milliseconds. Uh, packet lost is huge, and um, those are for VSAT based. So, meaning uh, VSAT based system, you have other type of systems um, uh, using on demand links, meaning which are more in terms of technology close to GPRS over satellite. And, and there, the, the meaning the values for jitter on packet loss on delay meaning just goes sky high. Um, yeah, as uh, as Harald mentioned, we started. Uh, we I think we started with to work with you guys back in 2009. Uh, I think it it followed an announcement of about OpenBSC. Um, I think the the most complex thing was actually to convince Harald that we would bring this system into production, and that it was meaning it was not a t that that would not be a toy anymore. Um, I think we have contributed. Meaning, uh, when I say contributed, we don't we don't uh, we don't write code ourselves. Uh, we ask uh, Sysmocom. We uh, we ask. We work with Olga for a long, long time uh, to write code for us, and then they submit it back to uh, to the Osmocom project. Um, I think, uh, of course, we started to work with Osmo BSC. Uh, we introduced the concept of BSC NAT. Uh, we introduced the concept of Osmo GB proxy. Uh, worked on something called Osmo STP, uh, which we that which we used in the beginning to connect to some uh, circuit-based equipments. OSMUX and finally the uh, ASN1 TCAP MAP uh, stack implemented in Smalltalk. Uh, I think that for since 2009, we have had an equivalent of, I would say, one or two permanent uh, employee uh, working for uh, working for the Osmocom project. Um, I think that something like 95% today of our, uh, let's say, BSS side uh, software is actually open source and is actually based on the on the Osmocom platform. Uh, the only thing which is not open source is the, and it's a very small piece of software. It's, I mean, it, there's almost nothing there. It's the piece that gets the GPS position. Um, what was the life before Osmocom? Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> that's back in 2007. Meaning it's, to be honest, that's back in 2001. Because the meaning nothing, meaning the system has stayed the same uh, from 2001 to 2007 before we created on waves. It's an interwave. <laughs> yeah, we st we started meaning the one uh, our first GSM uh, system. At, I think you still have the interwave logo on it. Uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, two TRX BS plus. No, no, no. Ah, well, yes, the but that came that came later, but that's the real one. In the so uh, before before we started, so before we started with Osmocom, uh, we were using at that time a circuit-based direction GSM MSC. Uh, we were using the Interwave uh, BS Plus, <laughs> which which was a fantastic equipment, almost. For its time, it was not too bad. Um, so that that was a two, the, that that one was a two watt base station. The one you have seen was a two watt base station. We then moved to a 25 or 50 watts base stations um, that we had to attenuate. Um, we were using some uh, pro proprietary signaling gateways. So those signaling gateways were converting from. Uh, uh, SS7, MTP2, MTP3 to some kind of MTP3 over SCTP. Um, and we were using some, uh, some Cisco devices uh, in order to do, uh, again, TDM to G7. To, we were using G7 to, to 3.1 at that time um, to carry voice over the VSAT link. So that was a very, very static configuration. I mean, you had one E1 trunk for each vessel. Um, one signaling gateway for each vessel, one signaling gateway on board. It's uh, all all TDM based. 90 kilograms, uh, 80,000 euros. That was a really crazy setup. But again, when you were deploying on board ships, where you have 5,000 customers and they were paying something like four or five euros per minute, um, you you it's okay. You can survive. So the first task, um, and we have been a little bit, uh, we have been a little bit uh, helped there in the sense that uh, we purchased more or less at the same time we started to work with Spocom. Well, with Spocom at the time, um, we just purchased an IP, uh, IP access circuit BSC, and we had also the access to the IP access uh, soft BSC. So it was really easy for us to take trace to compare. Um, in order to help the development without uh, without having to look at the specs and we, without violating the uh, uh, yeah uh, the, the NDA that we had with IP access. So again, uh, all the implementation has been done without any support from the BTS vendor or BSC vendor or even the soft the soft switch vendor. Um, and we used the we so we started by implementing the EA interface using the SCCP light, which is kind of proprietary, but or, I would say a little bit standard at the time. I mean, remember that most of the, the MSCs back in 2006, 2007, they were all circuit. There was almost nothing IP based. Uh, and I think, meaning Olga will, Olga will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think the implementation has actually been done in something like two, two or three months maximum. So that was the um, phase one was the, in the first the first attempt to get the IP access BTS connect to OpenBSC, have the A interface implemented on OpenBSC, uh, and have have it talk to uh, to to, um, to a soft switch, and even to a point at one point meaning at one point of time we even managed to get OpenBSC talk to the Ericsson MSC. Of course, uh, this setup has very limited scalability. Um, you need to def you still need to define e even if it's soft, you still need to define one trunk for each PSC, and you need to. There is absolutely no support for IP access, meaning for IP address translation, nothing. And um, and we had to we had also to take care 
of the non-standard SDP implementation that had been done by uh, IPXS at the time on the audio codes uh, media gateway. So that, that was seriously a pain. So we introduced a new equipment named BSC NAT. Uh, the idea behind the, the BSC NAT is that actually we would multiplex everything on the IPXS um, protocol. So we started to put, of course, the A interface, then MGCP uh, over the uh, in the in the same TCP stream, which made it completely meaning. Then it was extremely able, extremely easy to go through um, to to go through any any type of NAT, uh, and we kept. We kept the A and MGCP interface towards the MSC. So there was nothing to change on the MSC side. And actually, that, that's really what enabled us to move into production. So from the MSC point of view, it's one BSC. Um, you can support hundreds or thousands of remote BSCs. Um, so we implemented MGCP on the uh, the BSC acts as a RTP, RTP MGCP proxy towards the BSC NAT. So contrary to the, I think we have seen a few presentations this morning, uh, the voice flow goes through the BSC uh, to reach the BSC NAT. Um, then we uh, we added support for the control interface. Uh, the reason why we, meaning we thought, okay, we have a nice multiplex. Why not use it in also in order to remote control the, B, the BTS? And the idea with there was to get reports of the GPS position of the vessel and to be able to send back activation, the activation commands. So that's exactly what has been, uh, what has been implemented. That's the reason why you have this set get track um, paradigm. And then we just used an external interface on a small BSC, which is still, with, again, reusing the same IPA, uh, meaning IP access uh, protocol in order to submit the, uh, the location, the GPS position of the vessel. Another, another issue that we had to face was, meaning I was talking that the entire bandwidth available on the ship is 250 kilobits, more or less 250 kilobits per second. Um, if you just use normal RTP, the for an AM, we use AMR at 59. Uh, you end up with we en you end up with an IP stream which is more, more or less at 20, 24 kilobits per second, um, which is just not acceptable for this type of uh, this type of satellite link. <coughs> the other thing also is that RTP is using multiple UDP ports, and again, that's a pain with uh, with uh, firewalls on. Uh, on access on uh, access list to manage. So what we did is you have the meaning you have the normal RTP frame. You realize that uh, I think actually we have something like uh, 40 bytes. Uh, we have 40 bytes of header for something like 15 bytes of payload. Um, and that's that's for 20 milliseconds which is absolutely insane. So we introduced the EOS Mux uh, protocol that you are all free to use, meaning it's part of the main, uh, main Osmo BSC. Um, uh, so we introduced the EOS Mux, uh, bringing back, the, bringing back the, the, the idea of circuit, where uh, in one OS Mux frame, um, which usually contains something like eight, uh, eight samples, but that, that can contain more, meaning you decide. Um, you can have uh, payloads from one voice circuit. You can have payloads from multiple voice circuits, all in one UDP frame. Um, cool. So I have, some, I have some nice diagrams, uh, actually, that have been made by Harald. Um, Pablo. Ah, Pablo. Oops. Well, you, you see that depending on the so on the on the left hand side we use a batch factor of one, so that's uh, one f one uh, one frame per circuit, meaning one frame per concurrent call. You see that mean we reach something like eighty percent efficiency 
uh, if you have eight simultaneous calls using a batch factor of eight, then you have, uh, uh, again, you, I think you reach the maximum efficiency about six, uh, about six calls. You go down to less than eight kilobits per second. And you have not touched anything, meaning it's still the same, it's still the same AMR payload. Uh, it's using only one port, which is then it's extremely easy um, to to integrate. Um, some words about data. It's not the it's not the part I'm mostly proud of, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, we have not done much there. Uh, the only thing that we have done so far is actually to introduce the concept of a small GB proxy, and the the reason there was that the IP access BTS had some serious issues reconnecting if the uh, if the vsat link was gone so the, the main uh, the main job of the gb proxy is actually to reply to ns uh, ns alive messages and make the make the ip access bts uh, believe that uh, the uh, the ns uh, the ns vc is, is always there um, we we have also used the uh, used the osmo gb proxy in another way it's to be able to convert between BSSGB over UDP to BSSGB over frame relay because actually all SDSN is frame relay only. So, um, issues we face there. Uh, actually, the. Ooh. We, we have had huge difficulties and we still have to replace the, the, uh, the semen hosted. So the semen, I mean, Iceland Telecom hosted this GSN. Uh, there are a few reasons for it. First, it's, uh, the main reason is actually it's used for roaming, it's used for roaming test. So, um, then, uh, we had issues to connect to their GRX. Uh, to their GRX access because uh, because of uh, filtering again filtering issues, then you need to produce you need to be able to produce uh, CDRs using the same Ericsson format um, that they are already that they are already processing, and then you end up with their uh, absolute laziness and unwillingness to replace any of their own equipment with one of ours, or even more worse with something open source. Um, we have absolutely no other choice than to support MAP because of our inbound roaming uh, business. So we, we really need to support MAP. And uh, another thing that we face is that I mean, the, the system with those two GB proxies is fine, but it's extremely noisy. So as long as we activate GPRS on one ship, um, in the amount of data that we use for nothing is is really really high. I mean, it's, you have flow control, you have BVC, uh, keep alive all the time. Um, so the first uh, the first uh, the f the first thing we have done is that uh, we introduced a way in the GB proxy to to be able to route uh, GPRS traffic to different SGSNs. So depending on the MZ. And actually, you, you will see the same in the BSC NAT. Um, depending on the MZ, you can decide which S SGSN you're going to send traffic to. So we send all roaming traffic to the Ericsson SGSN. We send all non-roaming traffic, meaning our own traffic, to, our, to a small SGSN. Um, the other thing that we have done is that uh, Olger has developed for us a map proxy. Uh, so the map proxy is basically a map, meaning um, the map side of an SGSN um, with with a GSAP interface that uh, that can connect to Osmo SGSN. So uh, every location, meaning lo update location, attach attach request can be can be sent uh, over the over the SSM network um, using the map proxy. Um, the second evolution that we're going to do, and that's going to, uh, that's a work in progress that we have with Harald, is to um, to create the con to move the SGSN on board and to create the concept of a GTP proxy. So instead of sending G BSSGB over satellite, which is really um, inefficient, we're going to do GTP over satellite. Uh, which is way, way more, meaning it's, it's, meaning you have a few keep alive per, I would say, minute or seconds, and that's it. 
keeping the um, uh, keeping the GZIP, meaning uh, the, the the map protocol in the in the IP access multiplex. Just to complete, I have something. Uh, I have something a little bit interesting there. Um, a few years ago, we started an MSC project. Uh, the reason was that we had difficulties at that time with the soft switch vendor. Uh, they had been purchased by a crazy uh, Irish company. Um, so we started the project to replace that soft switch. In order to replace that soft switch, of course, you need the TCAP map uh, camel uh, implementation. And that's uh, what uh, Olger has started with uh, people from Tudenker uh, to implement in Smalltalk using Faro, a dialect of Smalltalk. And the funny thing is that uh, that MSC project died, but we ended up with a map proxy, an HLR, an SMS home routing platform. There it is. So, okay, thanks. Uh, we're slightly over schedule, but still, I think we have a chance to take a couple of questions. So, if there are questions, please raise your hand. Question. Um, since it's a commercial uh, application, uh, how do you handle the fulfillment of obligation with regards to uh, essential patents uh, that are uh, related to the protocols? Well, I think most of the I think most of the patents for GSM are actually extinct. Um, I'm not completely sure there. Um, it's. I mean, it's difficult to make a, a statement, but yes, I mean, since GSM, we're talking about 2G here, has first been deployed in uh, the early 1990s, I think 91, 92. Um, the patents uh, on GSM should have expired all by now, right? It's it's 25 years or 20 years or something, so it clearly has passed by now. I mean, it's not a 3G network, it's not a 4G network, so... Yeah. And the, the, over, the over issue we had with patents was AMR, but the thing is, actually, we don't do anything with AMR. Uh, we use media gateways that process the AMR, meaning the, the patent is paid there, and the, it's actually the phone which is sending the AMR flow to the base station. Any more questions? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised. Okay, but anyway, good. Thank you, Rock. Thank you very much. <laughs>